I've come up with a proposal for Division 1A football for a playoff. All the other college sports have it. Basketball has it. Softball. Baseball. All other levels of football have a playoff except for Division 1. The fans would love a playoff. The players have uh, voted in favor of a playoff. As a matter of fact, 62% of the players said they would prefer a playoff to the BCS system. You heard that right. 62%, which is a pretty good majority. So in the system I've devised here to show you what a playoff could look like, I used the BCS bowl poll, the final poll, from the end of last season after the bowl games were finished. And this system I've come up with includes the minor as well as the major bowl games, which you will see here in this illustration. So let's take a look at what a playoff system could look like in Division I football. Week 1, December 19th. Last year, the bowl games began on December 19th, so the date has not changed. And what I did, I took those top 16 teams from that final BCS poll, and I gave the top 8 teams a home game. And the bottom 8 teams traveled to those sites for week 1. West Virginia goes to Alabama. Georgia Tech goes to Ohio State, and so on down the line. At the end of week one, seven days later, December 26, is week two. This is when the major bowls become incorporated. In this case, the Sugar, the Rose, the Cotton, and the Capital One. Now these can be switched out. You can put the Fiesta in there and take out the Cotton, for example, and move it around, as you will see here in a second. So the top eight teams come to week two on December 26. One week later, January 2nd, the semifinals. As you see here, the Orange and the Fiesta Bowls. And as I said, those can be interchanged you know, from one season to the next. And also, between these dates, during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, the minor bowls can be played. The Emerald Bowl, the Holiday Bowl, the New Mexico Bowl, and all the others. So those teams who get those minor bowl games will still get to go to a minor bowl if they don't make the playoff system. And finally, week four, January 11th. Nine days later is the national championship game. Last year, the national championship game was played on January 7th. So as you see, the dates don't change very much. Begin the same date, December 19th, end pretty much at the same time on January 11th. Some people will argue that there's too much travel involved here. Well, in an NCAA basketball tournament, those teams that make the Final Four, they travel to three different cities. Baseball does something similar. Those teams are traveling. Softball, the same thing. So the travel argument really doesn't suffice here because the travel is not much different than those other sports. Here's some miscellaneous items. First of all, there's 15 games in this system, in the bracket. Other bowls play on different dates, as I've already mentioned. In this case, Oklahoma would replace Virginia Tech in the Chick-fil-A Bowl because Virginia Tech qualifies for the 16-team bracket. And again, this is based on last year's bowl setup. Mississippi replaces West Virginia in the Gator Bowl for the same reason. And both those teams, Oklahoma State and Mississippi, were originally scheduled for the Cotton Bowl. And the Cotton Bowl is part of this 16-team bracket now. Also, we would need a team to replace Miami in the Champ Sports Bowl. So we would have to bring one more additional team into the bowl system. And with the number of teams that already qualify, one more team is not that big of a difference. Another argument we hear is that this would add too many games to a team's schedule. Well, as it stands now, a lot of teams are playing 13 games. In this scenario, half the teams, eight of them, will play only one game. So that doesn't change things for those eight teams. If they go to a bowl game now, they're playing one game. Four teams play more than two games. So 75% of the teams play two or less games. Only four teams will play Two or three or more, three or four games. And finally, the dates can be changed. That's flexible. This is just an illustration to show what it could look like. So what I did is I took those 16 teams and I put them in a bracket. And the top 16 is listed over here. And you see again West Virginia at Alabama, Georgia Tech at Ohio State, and so on down the line for week one. So what we're going to do is play a little game here. And I have a die set up. And we're going to spin the die to see who would advance through this bracket. Now, teams like Alabama and Texas, they're the top two seeds. Pretty big favorites in week one, so they'll get five numbers out of the die. Miami and West Virginia need number one to advance. The three and four teams, Cincinnati and Texas Christian, also pretty big favorites. They'll get four numbers. The underdogs will get numbers one and two in order to advance. All the other games in round one will be 50-50.
So let's roll the die and see what would happen. West Virginia. Could West Virginia upset Alabama? Sure. Highly unlikely. In this case, Alabama gets a five and comes out to the second round. Georgia Tech at Ohio State. 50-50 matchup. The top team will get the odd numbers, and the bottom teams will get the even numbers here. And it comes up odd, so Georgia Tech beats Ohio State. Third game, Iowa at Boise. Boy, this would be a great game to watch. Again, the top team gets the odd numbers, the bottom team the even. Comes up even, Boise State advances into the second round. Penn State, TCU. TCU is a four seed, so it gets four numbers. Penn State needs a one or a two to advance. Comes up a three, Texas Christian into the Rose Bowl. Brigham Young at Cincinnati. Cincy, a three seed, also gets four numbers, so BYU needs a one or a two to advance, and it comes up a four. Cincinnati into the Cotton Bowl. Look at this next game, LSU and Florida. A rematch from the regular season. A great game. Florida won by ten points. People would love to see this rematch in a playoff system. And it's a 50-50 matchup, so LSU needs the odd numbers. Florida the even, and it comes up even, so Florida wins the rematch in the bowl system. The next game is Virginia Tech and Oregon. Another great matchup we probably would not see without a playoff system. So it's a 50-50 game, odd to the top, even to the bottom, comes up odd, Virginia Tech into the second round. And again, here's a, a, a pretty big favorite, Texas. Miami would need a one, and it comes up a six. Again, could an upset happen there? Yes. Likely, probably not. But let's look at round two. Are these some good games or what? Alabama and Georgia Tech. Boise State and Texas Christian. Cincinnati at Florida or against Florida. That, that would not be a home game for Florida. And Virginia Tech against Texas. These are some four great games that people would love to see. The fans would love it. I think the players would love it. This would be an exciting week of football right here. And as you see, your major bowl games are included in that part of the bracket. So in this case, your top seeds, Alabama and Texas, gets a little bit tougher in week two. But they're still favorites. They'll get four numbers. The underdogs will get two, numbers one and two, and the other two games will be 50-50. So let's roll the die here and see if Georgia Tech pulls a one or a two. It doesn't, and Alabama advances to the Orange Bowl. Boise State and Texas Christian, an exciting game. Boise State gets the odd numbers. It comes up even. TCU advances to the third round. Cincy and Florida, boy, another fun game. Since he gets the odd numbers, Florida the even numbers, comes up even. Florida advances to the semifinals. And finally, Virginia Tech and Texas. Again, Texas a pretty big favorite. Virginia Tech needs a one or a two in order to advance, and it comes up a six. Texas in the semifinals. Look at that final four. Wow. Alabama and Texas Christian, Florida and Texas. Again, an exciting week of football on January 2nd, the day after New Year's. Everybody is at home watching this thing. And the advertisers, how could they complain about this? The TV stations. This would benefit everybody and bring a lot of excitement. So now that we're in week three, it gets a little bit tougher. Three weeks in a row, three tough opponents. So it's going to be 50-50 for both of these games. The top team, again, gets the odd numbers. The bottom team, the even numbers. Comes up odd, Alabama, to the championship game. And Florida and Texas, the same thing. Top team gets the odd numbers. It comes up even. Texas comes out here for the national championship. And as it works out, we have the same national championship game we had last year anyway. So let's see how it would work out. The top uh, team, Alabama, needs odd. Texas needs even. That would be your national championship based on this type of thing. Again, it's an illustration. Would this be exciting or what? A fun four weeks of college football. The bowl games... At times, it's a little bit boring, to be honest about it. But this would bring some excitement to it. Your top two seeds, in this case, came out to the end. It benefits everybody. It makes college football more exciting. If you lose in week four and you're 10-1, and one, you're not eliminated from the system. College baseball revamped its playoff system a few years ago. College softball did the same thing. NCAA basketball is talking about expanding. Even pro golf incorporated a playoff system. NASCAR has done it. Pro baseball with the wild card. All those innovative ideas made it more exciting for everybody. The fans, the players, the advertisers, the TV stations, the host cities. This would benefit a lot of people. Here's a good illustration. It's something for us to think about to improve the national championship system in Division I football.